Hi, Jill Strawberry here. I'm answering a very important question for Navya today. Navya, you wanted to know what else you can do besides be an astronaut. I mean, not everybody can be an astronaut, right? Let me tell you the story of Deke Slayton. Gosh, I love the story. His real name was Donald, but he went by Deke. Back in the day, that was the thing to do. Anyhow, so Deke wanted to be an astronaut really bad, and he trained really hard, and he made it through most of the tests until it got to one of the medical exams, and they discovered he had an irregular heartbeat. And because of that, he wasn't allowed to be an astronaut. He wasn't allowed to fly. And he was very sad about this because he'd worked really hard to be an astronaut. And he really wanted to go to space. Well, they put him in charge of the astronauts, the astronaut office, and they told him, you get to choose who goes into space. So he did that for many years. Deke was the person who chose which crew would go into space next. He chose Apollo 11's astronauts to go land on the moon. And he announced that the week before. Now, other people came to him and gave him advice, but he was the final arbiter of those decisions. And he wouldn't explain his decisions, which was the perfect answer, actually. Anyhow, so Deke did this for many years, and then one day he got sick. And you know how you get sick and you get a lot of advice? Eat chicken soup, drink some hot tea, you know, make sure you put honey in that tea. Well, Deke went to the doctor and the doctor said, take lots of vitamins. Deke said, okay, you're the doctor, I'll take lots of vitamins. So Deke did, he took handfuls of vitamins and guess what? He started feeling better. He, he not only got over the flu, but his heart started feeling better. And he went to the doctor and he had some tests run and sure enough, his irregular heartbeat was gone. And so he worked out and he went back to the doctor and he had to go back to that doctor for three years before they would clear him to fly. And so finally they did and finally he became an astronaut and was able to go into space. Isn't that amazing? Now, there's a similarly amazing story for Alan Shepard, but um, if you're interested, I'll let you look that one up. It has to do with an inner ear thing. But for the rest of us, some of us are never going to get over our medical issues. I have bad eyesight, and I'm a little bit older than what they're looking for for an astronaut. I probably fail on a few other of the uh, admissions questions too. They like to have PhDs or doctors, but <laughs> that's okay. There are other jobs that support the astronaut. The astronauts need all of us to do our jobs. I am a mechanical engineer and I actually help design some of the hardware for the spacesuit. Now, I did that for a very short period of time before I moved into project engineering. A project engineer is, performs duties much like a program manager, but on a smaller scale. They keep track of um, budget and schedule for a certain small portion of the greater program. So I was a project engineer, and as an engineer there are some technical duties also. And then after I did that for a while, Garrett, my current boss, saw my talent, saw that I was doing some of the work that his team does because they were shorthanded, and he invited me to apply for a position on his team. And so I moved over into supply chain and I am now working in subcontracts. Now what does a subcontracts program manager actually do? Well, I help the engineers write the scope of work, the SOW or SOW, and that tells the vendor or the subcontractor what work they need to perform. So for example, we need a camera to go on the helmet of the spacesuit. 
And so we'll write a, a, a sow that has all the technical specifications and says how it's going to be mounted on the helmet and how, how many pixels we need in the camera and, the, and that sort of technical goodness, right? So that's what a sow is and a subcontracts manager helps to write those and then make sure that all the paperwork is done so that a supplier can be vetted. Um, that means that we can look into them and make sure that they're a real supplier and that they can get paid. And because we have government contracts, we have certain paperwork that the government requires, requires us to do. So yes, in a nutshell, I do a lot of paperwork, but I also get to see all the technical details for the hardware and I get to work with suppliers. I meet them, I talk to them, I facilitate conversations between them and engineers. Sometimes I go visit them and I'm, I really love my job, I really do. I didn't think I would go like going from engineering to subcontracts, but I really, really do. Now there's a lot more engineering jobs going back to the design process. There are mechanical engineers. Mechanical engineers design hardware. Those are the things you can touch. Uh, for example, your cell phone. Let's talk about your cell phone for a minute because it's a lot easier to understand a cell phone than it is to understand an entire spacesuit, right? But a cell phone has a case, something that you can touch, right? And a screen. So a mechanical engineer designed those. It also has some software on it, right? So a software engineer may have been the one to program that. An electronics engineer may have designed the circuit card assembly inside that device and calculated the power that was needed for the battery and designed that. So you've got mechanical, electrical, software, that's a lot of different engineers, right? Systems engineer looks at the entire thing from a higher level and writes the requirements. Now that's kind of hard to understand without an hour or two of classroom work. It took me a while to understand what systems engineers do. Let me just assure you, they're just as important as all the others. And, um, and there's a chief architect who may design the entire system. There are analysts who perform thermal analyses, structural analyses. There's computational flow dynamics, CFD. So thermal analyses is looking at the heat going through the system. Structural analyses is to make sure the thing's strong enough so whenever you hold that cell phone or drop it, it won't break. Okay, it's going to break at some point. So the structural analysis will tell you when it's going to break or how hard you can actually hold it, right? And make sure that's within allowable limits. So we've got a bunch of engineers, we've got some contracts, we've got project engineers, a program manager oversees the entire program and talks to the customer. Very important job because the program manager is responsible for all of us doing our jobs. Program manager needs to make sure that everything runs smoothly and that the product is what the customer wants at the end of the day. Now, going back from cell phones to spacesuits, there's a lot more people. There are trainers. Those are like teachers, teachers for the astronauts. Somebody's got to show them how the thing works, right? and how to get into and out of the suit and how to resize it. And then you have suit sizing engineers that actually measure the astronauts. There are technicians. Technicians are very important at very different points within the, the assembly, integration, and test process. Oh, there are test engineers and test technicians because we've got to test it. We've got to shake it on vibration tables, vibration tests. We've got to put it in thermal chambers to get it hot and get it cold. We've got to take it down to a vacuum to make sure it will survive in the vacuum of space. That requires a lot of support staff and technicians. So there are a lot of different jobs. Did you know that we even require scuba divers? The astronauts train 
in the world's second largest swimming pool called the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, the NBL. And the NBL, when an astronaut is in the suit in the NBL, there are always three scuba divers that are watching them to make sure they're safe and to be there in case they need help. So now we've got scuba divers added to the list with trainers and engineers and project engineers and program managers and subcontracts. And I could probably go on all day naming all the important people who help make a spacesuit possible and help support astronauts. One of the funnest jobs, in my opinion, Okay, they're all fun, but another fun job is in mission control. There is a whole team of people who sit in a big room while the astronauts work and talk to them. And there's one that is running the show, and then there are other ones that have different desks. And some of my coworkers sit in the back room during every spacewalk and they're there in case something goes wrong with the suit. So you can sit in mission control and support the astronauts. Thank you so much for the question, and I hope that this helps explain to you that you don't have to be an astronaut to work in the space industry and to make a difference. The astronauts need each and every one of us support staff to make their jobs possible. Thank you so much, and if you have any other questions, please let me know. My email address is somewhere on the screen. Thank you for tuning in, and happy innovating!